Hey guys, you are watching Bob's Decline. I have had quite a few requests to make some more videos about substations and how they work. So what we're going to do here today, I'm going to give you a real quick rundown of how a substation works. Now we're just going to be covering the basics here. What we got here guys, we have two separate transmission lines coming into the substation here. Now these are both 138,000 volt lines. Two lines coming in, feeding two power transformers. So what happens, the line comes in, goes into these switches first thing. You can see it stops up on top on the steel girder there. The only reason the wire keeps going is it carries on overhead to that tower off in the distance and then again to eventually another substation. 138,000 volt line comes down in through this switch. Now this disconnect switch, which isolates the substation from the high voltage line, can only be operated under no load conditions. If you open that switch right now, it would draw an arc even until it's fully open. It'd be extremely dangerous, not only to the personnel, but it would, it would most likely cause damage to the equipment. So we come on through these leads into our bus work. Now the reason we go from the switch to bus work is we have a tie. This tie switch is open because we have two independent feeds for each transformer. If there happens to be a fault on this high line, we would lose power to half the town here. We can open this switch to isolate the transformer, close our tie switch, which essentially is stealing power from this high line in order to feed the other transformer. Pretty simple setup. Mind you, the process is much more complicated and time consuming. Now I mentioned earlier about that disconnect switch that it can't be operated under load. So how do we shed the load in order to operate that switch? So to drop the load, we have a second disconnect switch. This one is actually called a circuit breaker. Now there's two switching devices on this breaker. This one here is your visual switch, which opens much the same as these other guys here. But we have this second insulator here, which is actually a hollow tube filled with sulfur hexafluoride gas, SF6 gas. Now the reason it's filled with that gas is it's an extremely heavy gas. It, it's uh, much more dense than oxygen or nitrogen. So as the device disconnects inside that tube, the arc will begin to form. The heavy air inside there will actually snuff out the arc. And then the blade opens to give us a visual disconnect showing us that this has actually disconnected itself from the line. Looking down below, we have some grounding bars. Again, part of this switching device. Those will close up onto these leads right here and drain any induction in these lines into ground to make things safe to work on. Again, this is just the very basics of the setup. There are some extremely complicated procedures to this. So don't use this video as a training video. It is more just for curiosity on the basics on how the system works. So after our circuit switcher, we're coming into our power transformer. Now, like most transformers, these fellows are filled with oil. They're just a much larger version of what you see on a pole. Now, much like a car, the oil is used for cooling. As the transformer gets more and more loaded, it will heat up and the oil, which travels through these radiators, is cooled off. We also have an expansion tank up here, a conservator tank. What you see right here are lightning arresters. They are an actual physical path from the high voltage line to ground. Basically when the voltage gets too high, this allows it to bleed out in the ground. That's why they're lightning arresters. It mostly gets used during a lightning strike. Where the 138,000 volts goes in the transformer. That's where the magic starts, right there. Wire goes in through that bushing down into the transformer through the oil, around a bunch of windings. And then it comes out on this side, onto these much smaller bushings. Now the reason these bushings are so much smaller is the voltage coming out is 7,200 volts, approximately. We come out of the transformer, much the same way as it went in, and it disconnects. Now we're pretty much going to have the exact same setup on the low voltage side as the high voltage side. 
but the opposite. We have our disconnect switches close to the transformer here and our actual load braking devices are gonna be on the circuits themselves as they go out into the town one by one. This particular substation has six separate circuits. Now you'll see the wires go from our load braking device underground and up into our distribution circuit. Now this particular device is actually called an oil reclosure. There are many different types of reclosures. There's electronic ones, vacuum reclosures, oil reclosures. And this operates much like the SF6 gas interrupter, except where it's a lower voltage, it doesn't require the gas, it just uses simply oil to snuff out the arc as the circuit trips. Now this guy is hooked up to a computer. Sometimes again, when your power flickers, there could be a fault in the line. Let's say right now a bird lands on that steel, pecks his beacon to high voltage, the surge in current will actually trip out power in this device and the electronics will allow it to reclose to turn power back on immediately. However, if the fault current is too high or if it remains a fault, this device will lock the power out until a lineman comes out on site to investigate further. All right guys, that wraps up another one of my videos. Hopefully you learned a little something today about substations. Now I know we only scratched the surface, pretty much just covering how the power comes in and how it goes out. If you are a lineman or aspiring to be a lineman, don't forget my videos are to be used as a guideline only. Always adhere to your company's policies and procedures. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time.